So I think CD upset Paj, but I'm not, so, not sure they just finished. Oh, uh, they did just finish. CD looks like he's smiling a little bit. Hard to tell if he got masked on. Yeah, I don't know. I'll look in just a minute, but going right now, one. going to Egaz versus Akemi. Using the four jacks. The four jack yep. tag. You love to see it. Love to see it. So it's gonna be Palu Bayu. Uh, Palu Bayu on PS2. I can't think of any notable Bayonetta players in Middle Tennessee. Um, there, because there are. I mean, there's a meal. That's true. Yeah, yeah a meal. Yeah. Now I think one the one way people would know a Kemi. I'm pretty sure this is the same player who zero to death Cola. Is it? I okay. think so. In the Wendy's cosplay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Now you're remembering. Now I remember. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's her. Yep. Nice teleport back. Wow. Catches it with a back hit of the side B finisher. A beautiful pair. An smash. Yep. A beautiful pair from Egaz. And one thing about Egaz that you'll see in his gameplay is he is not afraid to just stand. He will just stand and wait. Oh, Egaz is so good at just standing and waiting. That's going to be a kill. Really nice witch time by Kemi. See, there's just a lot of patience coming out from Egaz here. Going for that F tilt. Oh, and if you did, the, another little interesting thing about Egaz, he's actually Danny's coach. He is. Yeah, he yes. coaches Danny. He's very good at it, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Danny, number one in Tennessee. Yep. Yep. Coaching skills definitely helping out. Which is why you should go use that 10% off on Metapod uh -huh. code warehouse on EGAS. <laughs> yeah, getting back into it. Both of these players are just patiently waiting for an opening. Explosive Flame not going to be able to find it, but the up smash, amazing call out from EGAS. Now Akemi is just struggling a little bit to get something started, but a nice little ladder uh -oh. this. That's some good damage. Yeah, that's really good damage for Akemi. Akemi really wants a kill. Oh, definitely. And you can see that she's kind of fishing for it. Yeah, really fishing for Problem it. Problem is, what are you supposed to do with the Palu sits in back airs? There's not much you can that. do. Egas is a very uh, a very uh, patient Palu. Oh my gosh. Had the call out with the down air. What a up call smash. out. That's it. And the lingering hit of that up air going to be able to take it. Game one goes to Egas for the two stall. Kemi's got to dig deep here. I believe that this would be an upset if Kemi were to take it. Oh, it, it would. Yeah, it would be an upset. E Egaz actually one of the TOs helped seed this entire event. Mm -hmm. That's true, that's yep. true. Did a phenomenal job because there haven't been a whole lot of in region. Yeah. Yeah. I know I had to fight someone from Tennessee, middle Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't fought anybody from my region. I'm from East Tennessee. Yeah. Really good at managing out of region conflicts for sure. Oh, Pop, definitely. Props to you guys. Good coach, good TO, good player. Now going into game number two here, small battlefield. Same platform layout, but a little smaller blast zone. Let's see what the adaptation is by Akemi here. Starting off with a little bit of a combo here, only 24% as Egaz finds a two straight dash attacks to even it up. Right now, keeping it fairly close, but Akemi's getting caught in a lot of these situations where she's reaching too far, and Egaz is just punishing it. Definitely. Now Egaz keeping control of this center stage, not really wanting Akemi to get anything started because he knows if Bayo touches you, it could just lead to your song being gone. Absolutely. Hmm. Uh-oh. This is a bit of a deficit here. Akemi, yep. Akemi needs a good opener, but she needs to do it without getting hit, without getting caught, without overextending. That's been kind of the theme this whole set so far. You guys are just so good at playing in the corner. Oh, that's unfortunate. 
Air dodging straight to the blast zone. Egas sitting only at 68% on that first stock, waiting for an opening, whiffing the dash attack, but no punish from Akemi. That's a dash tag. Egas just slowly, slowly, slowly building that damage, but Akemi's trying to even it up right now. It's really a game of cat and mouse here. You see the way they're just moving. Akemi's constantly, oh, that's gonna be it. Akemi got the opening with a really nice, really nicely timed glitch time. See, this could be big damage. Now Egas just slowing down the pace. See, look, literally, he's just sitting and waiting. He knows he does not have to approach, and Akemi able to find that opening, but she wasn't able to even up that percentage, and now Egas still in the lead. I would really like to see Akemi uh, mixing up those approaches more. That was good, that air dodge down. Amazing empty hop grab there. For real. Just amazing awareness, but not going to be able to take the stock. That Nair faded back, still not going to take it, but the explosive flame going to lose that stock. The headphones are coming off from Akemi. Headphones coming out. Akemi needs to dig deep here. That up, that up tilt. Oh, that back air was a lot. That's nah, not good. It's so hard, especially with a player like Egas, especially in a matchup like this. It's so hard to resist the urge to go balls to the wall. Just go, oh, that's going to do it. Yep, and that is a 2-0 and a fist bump for Egas. Egas playing that so well. Definitely. The patient play just came in so well. Constant nickel and diming, constant punishing on the overextensions. Akemi was just struggling again and again, just, just struggling to find the clean openings. Yep.